So let's just jump right into it. Are we jumping into it? We are sort of kind of jumping into it. Although I don't know what the lag is going to be like. That's okay. We'll save that problem for another day. All right. Excuse me one second, guys, while we get set up here. Um, welcome to another video and stuff. It's been a little while since we did a YouTube live uh, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, so um, if you guys follow me on Instagram or watch shorts at all, here's a little pen sketch that I did late last week. And I knew I was going to do a full render of this, so I thought, what a great excuse to do a long format video. This is the original sketch, just something quick and rough I did in a live video there. And this is the drawing that we're actually going to render. So let me set this guy aside here and walk through what we're going to be doing here. So as with all the demos that I normally do, it'll be a marker, airbrush, um, acrylic, pencil, and let me know if the audio is not coming through or it is. It's okay. Just want to make sure that I'm explaining everything okay. Otherwise, I'm just hanging out, talking to nobody. <laughs> well, actually, we're both here. It's not like we won't be talking to anybody. All right, so I'm actually just going to jump straight into it since I already know kind of um, the color and the scheme of everything that I'm going to do. So uh, I always kind of have materials picked out here off the side, I'll organize the colors that I'm going to use. So I've got my color markers, gray markers, my airbrush paints, everything already picked out. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Now I always kind of keep spare colors off to the side so I can just, or paper and markers rather, so that I can test all my materials before I get going. Right. Let me just double check. Uh, no, I don't get anything so far. But it's not like we get a ton of uh, <laughs> like we get a ton of stuff happening here. Uh, good evening. Hey, Hello. nice to see you. Hopefully the audio is working all right. Yay, I see it. <laughs> nice, nice. I'm glad you're here, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna start blocking out some colors in this thing. What are we with it? So we are drawing a Ferrari F40 LM. I did a rough sketch, uh, I think Instagram Live, a few days ago. Like I mentioned, I knew I was going to do a rendery rendy version of this one, so what a great excuse to just go ahead and do a live video, because we haven't really done a lot of them here in a while. So, as with always, I'm just kind of starting by blocking in some of these main colors. We're a million miles away from, uh, okay, good to know. All right, the audio is coming through. Right, we're about a million miles away from worrying about details, so the important stage here is really just just getting these colors in, like, sort of cleanly. They don't have to be perfect. We don't want to worry about that just yet. You can see that there's a lot of lines that I'm, gonna, that I'm just going to run right over, and we'll come back in with some of those colors later on. So I'm not worried too much about staying within the lines of anything, except for where I want the ink to go. But there are certain colors and stuff in here that I go that I gotta avoid so that I don't cause any issues later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hello, Pablo. Saying hi to everybody. Nice, thank you. It's um, let me say hello from Argentina. Hello from Southern California. What's everybody doing on this? I assume it's still Sunday <laughs> where everybody is. We don't tend to get uh, a ton of viewers in while it's live. A lot more people tend to rewatch these later. Um, so if anybody feels like I'm over explaining anything, it's because that later, later people will watch these and, and that type of explanation can be really, really helpful. But, but yeah, I don't think anybody gets to see the chat on the replay actually. So this is kind of the, the quick messy part, just kind of plotting where the solid color is going to go. It's okay. Um, so it's a Ferrari, so it's going to be red of course. Moving closer to you. No worries, no worries. So a little bit at a time as far as color goes, and you know, I'm right handed, so I'm working left to right. Um, so I'm going to be doing a lot of airbrushing, and so the nature of marker is I'm trying to block in these solid color areas so I don't have to worry about uh, masking and overspray and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, I need to leave myself some space to airbrush into. Um, yeah. Because we don't have any. Then what are you doing? What are you? what are you doing? So a whole lot of coloring in right now. <laughs> it's been a long day, so just sitting here to do some coloring is quite nice. So 
What's everybody else up to you? <laughs> so I'm just coloring, man. Is it hot where everyone else is, too? Whew. It's certainly a little warm here. At least inside, that's for sure. You can see most of what I'm doing is kind of just quick gestural lines. If you kind of sit and agonize over every single line, it'll uh, it'll show. <laughs> so it's better just to kind of say, you know what, I'm going to go for that. I'm going to go for that. I'm going to go for that. You know, just commit to it. It's, uh, it's a little faster. It's not always as accurate, but um, but I think I think some of this stuff looks a little bit better when it's done with more gesture, as opposed to just <laughs> just really cleanly putting in every single line. This is this is relatively clean, but. Steel. All right, all right. So I'm just kind of jumping around a little bit here. You don't want to overwork ink areas because they can they can pull and they can uh, they can feather. You don't want to make a mess if you don't have to. Um, and again, I'm not gonna I'm really not gonna be doing much uh, blending with markers at all. I'm actually gonna do all the blending with airbrush. So I want the marker to kind of be the color blocks, all the all the hard shapes where I don't want to worry too much about marker, or sorry, airbrush. All right. So I'm gonna walk around my uh, where the areas where I know I've got wet ink. I don't want to go too crazy. Yeah, just don't want to oversaturate the paper. If you uh, if you get the paper too wet, it can uh, it can warp, it'll feather. You know, I've already got some edges that are that are coming out a little bit. It's just the nature of working with uh, these really really wet markers. Not a bad thing. Just something to something to keep track of when you're working. Oh, I got you. Yeah. All right. So we've got this long run of open space. I see a lot of artists, a lot of marker artists, where they get a long space while well, they'll, they'll connect areas. I think the best thing you can really do is just kind of come in here and do this line solid. You know, that way you get a single pass as opposed to a bunch of short passes. And this guy is actually going to be entirely solid red, so we can just go ahead and color all of this in. And I'll flip paper around while I'm working so I can get an even better pool on a line here. And I am letting the, the lines feather a little bit. I'm not too worried about coloring outside of the lines. Certainly not on the first stages. It's not, it's not a big deal. Because um, all this is going to get so much more ink and paint on it. And there ain't nothing to worry about just yet. You know, if I was going to make errors, this is the time that I want to do it really, really early on. So that if i got to fix anything, I can do it later. Yeah, you know, try to make the, the mistakes early on if you got to make mistakes. <laughs> so I'm trying to give myself some space to airbrush into. I don't want to color. The car is going to be red, but if you just color it solid red, it'll look kind of weird, actually. <laughs> uh, some said. Oh. Yeah, Good evening. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you just color it solid red, it'll look like you colored it solid red. So avoid that. I always thought these live videos were just, oh man, just a touch boring just because uh, we're really just kind of watching ink dry here. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. YouTube says it's a no no. YouTube says no. Yeah. <laughs> so we just have to deal with me talking. Nobody wants to say what they were up to today, so. <laughs> All right. Yeah, maybe. Thank you. Maybe uh, just had the right amount of coffee today or something. I think I had too much coffee. <laughs> kind of wishing I had too much coffee. Had a long day. What's that? Too much coffee. Too 
This is, in a lot of ways, really the boring part of this whole process, but the necessary part to kind of to get everything else to make sense. So I'm trying to do as many of these lines as single pass lines if I can. Um, that's like not going back and forth too much, you know, because you can you can overdo it for sure. Uh, but we're really focused on on color block right now. We just want to get the solids in where we're going to go because we're going to airbrush everything else, and then uh, yeah, and then fill details from there. And literally, that's actually all the red that's needed right here. Maybe just a little mirror reflection there. Maybe a little mirror reflection there. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so <laughs> on to the next color. So I've got red already blocked in, obviously. So I can airbrush into that and airbrush all the transition areas out of that, actually, except for, <laughs> just notice something. Let's kind of get this in here real quick. Um, and then, so the remaining areas actually that need any work are actually just fields of gray. So grab some gray markers. That is definitely not gray, or not, not the gray I'm looking for. And start to work in some of these other areas. So actually it's two lights. Are you guys are moving out to Tennessee? We have a couple of friends that just moved out. And they're right and dirty is uh, packing and listening at the Oh time. nice. Say so he's moving to Tennessee. Well, it looks like. Oh wow. You say uh, from where? Wow, it's a busy day. <laughs> Tennessee is so close, you know, as we it is so close yeah. to Southern California. You're right. Fit right in there. <laughs> is it uh, hot where you're at, right and dirty? It's certainly warm here. Yeah. Air conditioner is off because it makes too much noise. It's on. Oh, it's on most days. Is it? It feels like it is. Yeah. I don't know that it actually is. No. Yeah, I know, right? It's plenty warm. Yeah, it's plenty warm in here. No doubt about that. I'm blocking in some of these gray tone areas because uh, they're going to have airbrush transition as well. And just like the red, I kind of want to get the base tones down first and then airbrush over that. So, you know, the more I can kind of get hammered out this way, the better off I'll be in those later stages. Uh, although there's not much. Like, I think the wheels, I'm almost entirely going to airbrush. It's all a surprise. We'll never, we'll never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I've seen one of these markers has like the wrong, <laughs> wrong cap on it. I don't do a whole lot of traditional illustration stuff anymore, so everything's kind of out of sorts and unorganized. But yeah, it's alright. What's that? Oh, yeah, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. So much what? Building the things. Building stuff. Yeah, it's a 
looks like we're probably going to get in the airbrush a little bit quicker than normal. It's a relatively simple car here, or at least I think so. I don't know. I guess maybe it's just something I've drawn a lot. But um, but the marker work to me is relatively simple. The airbrush work is, you know, all this stuff really really comes down to details. Um, here, I'm just picking two markers here. Just don't believe any of these things. Actually, I can airbrush all of those. So let's see, there's just a few fields of gray that I want to get good and solid first. Oh, that's wrong. Let's see what else. And we'll get into airbrushing. I'm using more of a, a Bristol paper right now. It is a marker paper, but it's pretty close to a Bristol. So it has kind of a, a bleed and feather to it that's, that's uh, specific to its how it works. Each paper kind of has a different look. So and actually kind of like the way this gray looks. So I'm going to go ahead and base gray everything in here with that gray so that I can airbrush everything into that. end up using lots of black later to, um, to create a lot of contrast in all of this stuff but again the first stages is really about just getting these base tones in because the solid gray or the solid red is a lot easier to manage if it's uh, like if I'm going to airbrush over it um, or sorry let me back up a couple steps to get this gray a single solid gray would be easier if it was masked out or stenciled or, or templated or something like that but to do it this way is just uh, like with ink first this kind of means we can make solid color areas really, really quickly. Um, and not have to worry about like overspray and stuff like that. And since I've already got gray, I'm just going to go ahead and all these areas are going to have a lot more black in them. Uh, but if we can base them, a little bit less work to do. And then we can also use the same gray to actually create a little bit of tone and shape out of some of these pocket areas. Like uh, what kind of cars and stuff? Oh, or what kind of artwork? Well, he said uh, wheels and tires. I need to sketch like a billion of them. Mm. I'm just wondering what else uh, if he just practices uh, on cars or on uh, like any other kind of artwork. Yeah, that's a good question. that for now actually let me just color in this little area and then we can switch gears a little bit it's so quiet without music <laughs> yeah it can feel a little bit boring You might a little bit of the quiet, but it's different when you know people are like watching. Yeah. And you're like, all right, must be boring, because <laughs> there's just like no noise happening. Oh, nice. Well, that's awesome. All right. So here's where we're at. Sort of a. Uh, Sort of unexciting, but this is this is what base work looks like. Nothing really 
You know, some people can kind of print these out of um, like the whole thing will look like it's printed out with markers. And um, sometimes I'll do demos where it's mar uh, marker only, but for this one I had a specific look in mind, so we're not going to do that. Uh, but we are actually at a good spot where I can actually jump into some airbrush. So I'm going to tack this guy down and get right into that part. It's kind of the kind of actually breathes a whole lot of life and contrast in it. So what I'm using today is Cretex Illustration Paints. These are my absolute favorites for illustration work like this. Let me just uh, get a good mix going on here. I've already got the airbrush set up. I probably should have had paint set up. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? Oh, God, you didn't get the paint yet? Yeah, well, I looked at them. I thought about it. <laughs> so carefully just mixing up some paint. He likes the quiet. He likes the quiet? Yeah, Ryan Gary likes the quiet too. This is not like so you. bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. I like some quiet. I don't, yeah, it could go either way, I guess. Alright, so today I'm shooting with a, an Iwata, a Micron, right? So I'm going to get the crown cap off of here. Come on. And then drop in some paint. Yeah, so let's see. Hopefully the airbrush doesn't freak out. Usually the first time you use it, when you have it in a few days, all the terrible stuff happens that you never wanted to have happen happens. <laughs> you know, it only happens when you're working on something live. <laughs> As is tradition. All right, so I, uh, I like capless airbrushes, which seems reckless and dangerous, but I live my life a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> so anyways, so I just kind of really carefully I need a little bit more air pressure here. So I want to try to keep the color within the color. All right? Seems obvious. So just by going over the marker that's already there, I can bring the saturation up up a bit. And what I want to be careful of is, you know, try not to get any overspray where it doesn't need to be. Some of that's inevitable, and that's okay. Yeah, happy accents, we say. I'm going to work the lowers a little bit just to kind of create a nice little ground reflection. Now, this type of work really could be done with, um, with the markers as well. Uh, I just think you're going to get a much more vibrant, reflective color out of the airbrush. You're just going to you're just going to get colors that, that just function a different way. I think they got a little bit more zing. Alright, so we're going to airbrush up to that body line there. Um, and I tend not to do any masking if I don't have to. So as you can see, I'm doing zero masking. Yeah, I just kind of want to work these colors together. Alright. And then kind of a similar thing off of the back end here. You don't need nearly as much because it's an upper reflection. And then a teeny tiny bit back here. Anywhere I left an open area is intended for a reflection. So it's all part of the plan. So same with the roof. You know, I'm going to really carefully... across the roof I don't want to put too much down too quick because otherwise I'm just coloring it in red and I could have done that with the marker anyways but the idea is to create a, a transitional color you know so we kind of get this bright hot pink which is sort of the idea of a you know really really reflective red uh, and you don't want to push too hard and by that I mean you don't, you don't want to over wet the area. Let it dry a little bit. That's where you can work with the air pressure on the airbrush a little bit to determine you know what, what's kind of working well for, for that area. This is a tight area, so I just want to be careful, let it dry a little bit. And actually to me that already looks good. So we're gonna, we're gonna get started on the next area. Again, I'm kind of going left to right, I'm right handed. And I just have in my mind how I want the color layout to look. So 
So I'm not working with a, a specific reference for anything um, to create this, uh, the way that the lighting is looking. I just, in my mind, I kind of think, this is how I want the colors to look and how I want the reflection to look. And as counterintuitive as it'll be, simpler is always better. You know, there'll be you know, a lot of these marker streaks and stuff like that. You could clean up with the airbrush paint. Just get a little bit more paint in there. These paints are still pretty transparent, so, you know, it would take an awful lot of paint to really, uh, you know, bury this stuff. But, but you can already see that this looks more saturated than this, not only because there's a little bit of airbrush paint on top of it, but because the reflection colors next to it bring the whole thing up together. So it might look a little bit different on, uh, on the, uh, on the camera, but what do you do? Right, so our upper surfaces are our flat areas. So this this kind of deck shape up here, and then our whole our whole snoot is going to have the least amount of paint because it's a big flat open surface. So it doesn't need as much to have the same impact. I'm just kind of letting airbrush overspray fall into certain areas because it's just not a big deal. Um, a little bit of the color washing over some of the areas is just not that critical. Uh, if you want it to be perfect, perfect, you could totally mask off a lot of this stuff. But by the time you come back in with the, the black airbrush over top of this, it really tightens up a lot of things. And by the time you detail some of the edges, that really tightens up a lot of things. So this area is a drop in. It's got a little bit more of a vent happening. I want to make sure, because I'm going to airbrush some black in that later just to give it some tone. But it's going to start with color first. Because if I just airbrush it without color first, it'll look weird. It'll just look dirty. So. Plus the color will do some of the heavy lifting for the value anyways. As I start to get more paint going across the, the nose here, it's easier to kind of go, all right, I definitely want to get this to be a little bit darker, or darker, at least get a little bit more of that pink color. You do want contrast as well, so. You know, you can't go, you can't go too light. I don't want that. I want to find the right balance. Well, we're getting there. Um, you could block this in with like a, a pink marker or something like that. I just, I just really like these extra soft airbrush transitions. And I am trying not to hit my face on the camera. <laughs> I'm like looking across everything kind of weirdly. Right, getting there. Progress. Now I've got a little bit more paint across this whole thing, I can kind of go, all right, I want to go a little bit darker here, a little bit darker here, kind of balance out this, maybe bring this down a little bit. Like you're just constantly making judgments about what you think is the right way to go. What's too much, what's too little. Um, and I find that with masking, it's harder to make that decision because you're covering up most of what you're working on when you do it that, with a lot of masking, I should say. Uh, but yeah, but airbrushing is a pretty part. Whew, I'm bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna go over a little bit of what's here too. Try not to hit my face on the camera. <laughs> Just because I want to get a little bit of ink or paint rather. Whoop, out of paint. Do 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 do. Sorry, adding paint. Paint is added. Oops. Careful. Mm 
Again, I'm trying not to hit my face on the camera. It's right there. Like forever working on what's the best setup for something like this. One day we'll get it. All right. Cool. It's actually a great spot for, for where this is at. Um, it's also great because the red now has all the value that I think that it needs to as far as shape and shading, minus a couple of scoops. Nothing too crazy there. So from here, it's really taking some, uh, some black airbrush paint and deciding you know, what, how to balance the rest of this. And I kind of have a look in mind for this piece, so it won't be hard to figure out. All right, it's taking shape. It's working. Doing good. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna clean out the uh, the red of the airbrush real, real quick. Ooh. Try not to paint my dog. Um, <laughs> that'd be like a tattoo. A tattoo. A little bit of red on the doggo. Uh, so don't mind me. I'll just clean out the airbrush real, real quick. And we'll switch over to some black paint. And keep on, keep on. Hmm. <laughs> I just feel like when we do these uh, live videos, like, I have to go faster, I have to go faster. It's a weird feeling. Very, yeah, very weird. Actually, what I'm going to do real quick, while I'm right, right here, sit here for a second, and I'm going to pull out an eraser and see if I can pull back some of this overspray, just a teensy tiny bit. So, the nice thing about working about uh, with illustration paints on on a board like this is you can actually work subtractively. You can take an eraser and pull out some of the airbrush. So let's see if I can find a good spot for that here. Well, we have uh, two pit bulls. Um, our oldest, Lucy, is a, she's white with a brown spot. And then we have our Ellie, who's the youngest, and she's tuxedo. She's black with some white tufts. Just our two little pit bulls. They like to, they know what we're doing all the time. <laughs> They're involved. Very involved. Very involved. So what I'm doing is taking a, an eraser here, just kind of pulling out a little bit of where I want these highlights to go later on. It's pretty easy to let overspray go, get a little bit crazy, obviously. Like I said, I'm not doing any masking here. Um, and I don't mind that because it can be cleaned up a little bit with an eraser. Now, if I if I make a huge mess, you know, I can't can't erase endlessly. So the idea is to, to kind of put the paint where you want it and give yourself just a little bit of space for cleanup here. But this is considered a subtractive technique. It's pretty traditional, like old school illustration. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Some dog will be an itchy. All right. Actually, I think that looks good. Oh, Maybe. Does everybody have pink balls? And they are the greatest. They are the greatest. You know, when they're not eating trash. Still. <laughs> Sometimes our doggos get into things. Oh, all doggies Yeah, it's true. Doggies after all. Excuse me, I'm grabbing something off camera real quick. I'm grabbing something off the knees. Bear with me a second. Alright, never mind. Fuck it. We're just gonna skip that one then. Alright, so now mix up some airbrush paint again. Oh yeah, pities are the greatest. They're so scary. All right, so again, switching back over to switching back over. It's exactly what I was using before, Kratex illustration paint. Right, so it's gonna mix up a little bit, and we'll keep on airbrushing. It's gonna be a little bit trickier this part because of where the camera is, but we'll make it work. You have to do a flippy do, or? I don't think that there's any options for what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go for it. Okay, okay. That is it. 
So just mixing up a little bit of black. And hope to not make any drops on the uh, artwork here. Hmm. Did manage to put some drops on my shirt though. <laughs> oh, you did? No. Oh, it's okay. It's alright. That's character. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right, airbrush ready to go. I think. Drop some paint in here. And the crown cap. And let's just have the test sheet. Make sure everything's working. Hmm. How are we doing here, airbrush? That needle needs to be reset. Hmm. <laughs> uh, things only don't work when you're doing a live video. I'm 100% certain of that. It's amazing. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, this is why you always test your materials and your tools. Before you start. Well, at least before you start on an area. I don't really know if this thing is going to explode or what it's going to do, but. I don't live my life in fear. So just like with the red, it's kind of building up the tone over top of what I based out earlier. Could I have done this with just a million more markers? Sure. This wouldn't look as cool. What's your side of that? I have no idea. In fact, the yeah, the compressor is actually quite old, so I don't know. But I do adjust as I go. I've got a Mac valve, um, you know, in case I want to get closer. But I tend not to operate at a specific um, pressure because it, you do, it's one of those details that you really shouldn't get hung up on. Adjust everything as is needed. Um, I wouldn't even be able to guess what that is. But as a compressor gets older, it just gets more and more tired, and it does a worse job. It'll be necessary to like drop the pressure later. Some of this I'll just come back in with a marker and do. Um, but I just kind of want to give you guys an idea of how I'm working that area there freehand. You can mask that out. You could just do that with gray marker or dark marker. Um, and that would work well, but it's not the same. Alright, airbrush is working a little bit better now. So, getting a little bit closer, so I'm going to bring the pressure down. Um, I'm sure that there's like recommended PSIs for, uh, for like starting points for what would be correct if you did certain types of things. Uh, but the truth is you can adjust the viscosity of the paint based on the pressure that you're capable of. So let's say you don't have the ability to have high PSI. Um, you can thin out your paint more so that it's a little bit more fluid. And that will kind of pick up the slack in a way. Now the airbrush is working a little bit more correctly. It can be a little bit more direct and a little bit more deliberate about um, where I'm putting tone and making it work. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So a lot of this I would normally just do... Oh man, really trying to work around the camera here with, uh, with marker, but I kind of want to do a bit more airbrushing on this one. Uh, probably because I've been doing more paintings lately. So what I'll do a lot of times on illustrations like this, or even with paintings, is let's say this is the closest corner to where, where the viewer is. And I'll let the colors kind of fade out in that direction. So the darkest darks will be right here. So this transition here, I'll just end up keeping that. Because I like that it's not one solid color or tone or, or anything like that. It's just a little bit more interesting to look at. Or at least I think. <laughs> Could be wrong. Mm 
So now we are officially watching paint dry. Yep. <laughs> Slow and uninteresting process that is. <laughs> well, this is part of the fun. I do want to get a little bit of airbrush over here just to kind of even things out. Uh, but just to give you a different feel, I tend to kind of have a little bit more of a the right word for that is, you know, sort of a depth of field type of approach. And part of depth of field is contrast. Alright, so let's see, let me get this area in here just a little bit darker. Not go too carried away. But just enough. Or hopefully enough. <laughs> Never know. Same kind of with our mid body tones here. Just so that, that you know, we want to cover up some of that marker that's in there. Because eventually the marker is going to start to feel pretty pale compared to the airbrush ink. And a lot of these details will just get hand painted later, anyways. But. Probably because I've done a million paintings lately that I'm just like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wing it and freehand a bunch of this stuff in and see what happens. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for this I probably would have just uh you know if it's gonna be that carried away, I would just have done a painting on canvas, but hey, here we are. <laughs> So already just adding some of the black has created so much more of the contrast in here, which is, is really what we're after, um, especially since we're starting on a, a bright white page. And in the process of uh, working this way with the airbrush over top of the marker, some of the edges are going to get lost, some of the stuff is going to get buried a little bit, and that's uh, it's not a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> Rod Nerdy said, you asked about our day, how about y'all? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Today's interesting. <laughs> Today was very interesting. <laughs> I would say it was a long day, but it has been a day. Yeah, definitely had worse, but uh, the short version being uh, set it up uh, with a dead battery on the side. I'd like to say it was the side of the road, but it really wasn't the side of the road. <laughs> the middle of the road. So waiting for uh, waiting for AAA to tow one of the cars was not exactly what I had in mind for my afternoon, but eh, it happens. Not the end of the world. Definitely made the day more eventful, though, that's for sure. So there's that. <laughs> people thought we were just hanging out on the side of the road like this is a cool thing that people do all the, all the time and yeah, they were super stoked to be on the side of the road but people were not happy with us how, how much more uh, moving stuff do you have to do right there go a lot of stuff uh, yeah it is what it is exactly yes it's car life you know it's We've had a lot, a lot of different cars over the years. The reality is, it happens. <laughs> doesn't matter if the car is perfect or the car is just, doesn't matter. It just, batteries are batteries. Sometimes stuff happens. So, no, it is all good um, as far as that. It's just unnerving when people are yelling at you. People just assume the worst. <laughs> it's so annoying. Nah, we weren't trying to be in anybody's way. Obviously. <laughs> But 
lost count of how many times we've been on the side of the road in the uh, Roadster. Um, Actually, that's what I thought you were in when you called me. Yeah, but uh, always keep a set of tools in that car just because <laughs> something inevitable will always happen. But yeah, end of the day, not the end of the world at all. Just definitely worked on our tan today. That's all. <laughs> Uh, too much moving left to do. At least two of my kids will be in school tomorrow. Oh man, well that is a plus. <laughs> school starts tomorrow. Oh yeah, that's true. That is true. I'm so sorry for the teacher. Yeah. Woo yeah. <laughs> yeah. I lost my train of thought. That's okay. I'm stoked that the kids are going back to school too. Less people at the beach. <laughs> Just trying to get the airbrush in these tiny little areas here. Microns are really awesome for that. I didn't buy my first one until not that long ago. I have no idea why. I've been airbrushing for forever. And I finally, finally pulled the trigger and bought a Micron. I'm like, where has this been my whole life? What have I been doing? Working way harder than I need to, apparently. But they're spendy, so I'm pretty sure I know why I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly, using black in artwork is considered a no-no. Considered what? It's considered a no-no. Ah. Solid black or solid white. Um, it's not it's, yeah, it's not considered a good thing to do. <laughs> Uh, no, I should say not in traditional art, like okay. what you and I are more fans of, like uh, animation art. That's that's where black and white really shine. Yeah, exactly, contrast. But if I was gonna sit here and try to custom mix every single one of these grays and these pinks, like psh, f all that. <laughs> <laughs> like. I mean, if I think I'm shooting solid black here, it's still being airbrushed, so it's all done really, really transitionally. Nothing here is solid black. Even if you used marker on white paper, it still wouldn't be solid black because the paper absorbs the ink, and you kind of end up with this really dark brown <laughs> or dark gray. Um, you don't really get into solid blacks until you're really scooping paint and putting it on a canvas. not to be uh, trying to be careful not to overdo it with the uh, with the black because a little bit goes a long way and um, as you can see we're just building a whole lot of contrast kind of the nice thing about working from a white illustration board a marker paper um, and I do the opposite when I'm doing paintings on canvas is that because you're starting with a white background you can really build everything towards the level of contrast that you're after I'm going to add white to this of course to to give it the look that I want um, as far as highlights and stuff but um, I take the opposite approach with uh, with paintings on canvas. I'll, if I was going to do a red car, I would base the whole canvas red and then work all the tones around that and then cut a background out over that. But canvas is a different thing than illustration board. Too much material on this and it will get sad and it will hate you. Um, yeah. <laughs> it will hate you. Yeah, and once it hates you, you're screwed. That's it. Yeah, doomed. I know, it's crazy. Alright, so I'm going to start airbrushing in some of this window stuff here, these scoops. Now, especially in these back areas, I don't mind the bit of overspray that's kind of grabbing a couple extra edges. Because uh, reality is, my focus area is up here. So some of this stuff having overspray kind of allows the edge to look a little bit softer. It's a little bit more out of focus. I'm good with that.
And then areas that have worked earlier that I know are dry, I can go ahead and just put a little bit more into. Because if we just cannot keep working the same areas over and over again, eventually the, uh, the illustration board will revolt. I know, and it will win. God, the lighting in here. Jesus, what a nightmare. <laughs> we have to come up. I, I think this is the first YouTube live that we've done in our new studio. I say new, we've been here for a year and a half. But, um, <laughs> but still, uh, <laughs> there are some challenges. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So I'm, I think that's good for that window or the glass there, I should say. Um, last thing to really do, as far as general airbrush tone, anyways, is the the glass here. Actually, I'm gonna get into the headlights a little bit, um, especially because I've got some uh, some overspray in those areas where it's a little bit got a little bit of that pink. And again, I kind of did the, the base gray work so that I could do all the airbrush transition work on top of it. And then by the time I'm done with this part, you know, I've created a little bit of the depth in the headlight buckets. I've cleaned up all the, uh, the way that the air, uh, markers look. You know, sometimes markers kind of have a weird textury modely look. Sometimes it's cool. Sometimes it's aggravating. And a lot of times it will just depend on what kind of surface you're using. So I wanted those headlight buckets to have a little bit more depth in it. So actually doing this was a good call, I think. And like I said, you could do all this with the um, with markers. It just <laughs> would have a different look, and you'd be using markers endlessly. Maybe that's your thing. I don't know. It's just not my thing. Yeah, um, I actually like working with just markers as well. Um, kind of has its own look. But at the same time, I just kind of go, you know what? I know how to use an airbrush. I'm gonna go ahead and use an airbrush. Because uh, in a lot of ways, I feel like it's faster. But if uh, it's also can be a really difficult tool to use and to learn, especially the mixing of paints. Um, so <laughs> I can see why a lot of people don't. Because, you know, imagine <laughs> having never used an airbrush before. You're going to start painting on one of your illustrations, not knowing if the airbrush is just going to explode right all over what all you're doing. It's not a good feeling. You don't want to find that out. It does yeah. happen. Well, one of the things that gave me anxiety in art school was to do a really nice out outline and sketch, and then I'd have to color it. Yeah, I can see that. I was like, I know what you're doing. Sometimes the outline is the most fun part. Mm -hmm. Um, and things can get quickly ruined. You know, a cool outline can become a mess if you uh, if your coloring isn't strong or if you're using tools you're not familiar with. You're going to be a little out of your comfort zone. Sometimes that's good, and sometimes it's a part of disaster. So. Just kind of going a little bit at a time here. Because I know there's a lot of aspects of the airbrushing here that I'm going to clean up once I've got uh, paints and a paintbrush. Uh, so I can create all these clean edges that I'm after. And life will be good. So now at this point you can really tell what's just based marker and what's got some airbrush on it. Just because the contrast has a different read. The values have a different read. The way airbrush looks on this illustration board has a different feel. It's just starting to look like something. What's that? Yeah, that's the goal anyway. So we're, what are we, 54 minutes in? This isn't bad. Honestly, if I wasn't bumping my head into the camera every second, I could probably pick up the pace a little bit. But, um, but I'm trying to be steady because uh, it's funny. A lot, of this, a lot of the mistakes will happen because of, um, because of trying to be careful. If I go faster, I won't necessarily make more mistakes. But, you know, say I'm working around the camera or, you know, I've got a cup of water or something near me. Being careful, for me, actually tends to cause me more, more errors. 
So if I can just be reckless and go fast, it won't make me better. It'll just it'll just work better for me. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's even more traditional than this by a long shot. So if you like chalk pastels or um, dry pastels or even even traditional pastels. I think um, like early Chip Foo stuff and Tom Taylor, um, all that. All the really early stuff was uh, even early automotive design uh, concept stuff was like chalk pastels. Um, I tried that. I use it every now and then. It it does work really really well, especially if airbrush is not your thing, and it can add a lot of comfort to what you're doing. There's a lot of trade-offs though. Um, same with airbrushing. It's not like it's all going to be perfect and amazing. Uh, so, but at the end of the day, just kind of like what I was saying, uh, comfort level. Use tools that really help you do what you know how to do. Don't be afraid to learn some new stuff and try some new tricks. Just kind of want to glaze this, uh, this glass in here, as well as a little bit of the interior, because uh, it's not my job to like over detail this interior. What I'm looking for is more of a representation of shapes. And like I said, kind of a nice transition of dark to light over this way. Some of the harshest highlights and stuff. I'll address later with uh, with paint brushes. Hi, Ellie. Yeah. Right. So that's actually got a nice balance look to it. I don't want to go too crazy. Um, otherwise, I'm just painting it, painting <laughs> painting the glass black, which I don't want to do. I just I want to balance everything out. Um, so yeah. Brings me down to the wheels and tires here, which I've got is a nice simple gray, and it's another thing that I definitely, definitely don't want to get too carried away with, uh, because I have a specific style that I want this to look in the end, and I kind of like this sort of unfinished bottom edge. I'm going to airbrush across the bottom, but what I want to do first is airbrush these wheels and tires to give them a little bit of shape and depth first. And just enough. Again, I don't want to overdo it, but just enough. Which me saying that I'm not going to overdo it is a sure way to make sure that I'm going to overdo it. Alright, so just a little bit of time here. Compressor's like on, off, on, off. Oh, my hand is cramping. <laughs> Just holding the airbrush too, uh, too intensely. I'm using a, a little bit of eraser here just to clean up this wheel edge. So I'll come back and work a little bit more um, with some paint. But just kind of want to get it while it's there. Spent a lot of years just doing airbrushing long before I was doing uh, like illustrations and artwork, so this is this is kind of the easy part. And uh, as more of the areas are airbrushed, they start to feel just a little bit more natural, a little bit smoother. Um, you know, a lot of it's getting it's a lot of it's getting softer because the airbrush just does soft edges, so all that will kind of get recaptured. Once we go in with the uh, the hand painted details, <laughs> what's that? 
The dog is sighing. Are you boring here? She's boring. Oh no, my goodness. So hard in the puppy, oh my goodness. I know, I know, it's crazy. Lucy again? Yeah. What's she doing over there? Get in there. And I gotta do a little bit of airbrushing work on the back end here just to kind of balance things out. I don't need a ton. I just want to get a little bit of tone in there. And cover up just a little bit of that pink over spray. So it won't take much. Because the majority of the details that I think are gonna really bring it together are going to happen with paint anyways, so I don't want to get too hung up in the airbrush stage. You can freehand everything and you can maybe get it there, but at the same time, just know the limits of how far you want to go with each stage. Getting carried away would be pretty easy to do. But we've already got something that's got a lot of really good shape to it. So I think that actually works for what I'm after here. Yeah, totally. Terribly, terribly. A lot of stuff you just find yourself going back and forth and like, yeah, it's endless. You can just do this forever. Right, so what I really want to do now is get this little ground line in here. Doesn't have to be crazy, but just enough to kind of plant the car. You know, the original initial line work will do a lot of the weight there, so you don't need to overdo it. Just need to put something there so it doesn't feel like a flat line. All right. Take a look. Looking really good. Really clean. A lot of millionaires that need some uh, some detail work, but they all do. <laughs> and it's just the nature of the thing. So it's just a couple areas I want to just touch up with an airbrush first, and then we'll switch gears a little bit here. Too much. Faces in the way, it's unavoidable at this stage. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is more or less uh, balancing contrast. I want to make sure that if I've got areas that need some harsher shadows, and just to just go for it. All right, so let's just kind of take a, take a step back, make sure it's kind of looking all right. 
and I do believe that it is. So one thing I do want to do real quick before I get too much further in. So I do want to push this particular bucket just a little bit harder as far as uh, getting some transparent black over top of that just so the contrast is a little harder. Now I'm not totally done with the airbrush yet, but this is kind of, um, this is at least the perfect stage to get on to the next part. There's going to be aspects of the airbrush, you know, as I go, but this is a good spot to kind of switch gears a little bit. And stuff. Yeah. Just a little bit more airbrush in the detail area behind the wheel here. teensy bit high. Um, let's see. All right, make sure I haven't missed any questions. We're doing good. edges just a little bit so that when I come back in with some paint I can make them a little crispier yeah. just find it a little bit easier to use the airbrush to do the soft shapes and then the paint to do the uh, or the paint brush I should say to make all the uh, hard shapes Same thing on the rear, just to kind of balance everything, make sure. It doesn't look like two different people did the wheels. I've got the pressure down a little bit lower because I'm working closer. Got a little loopsy there, but that's all right. <laughs> Part of actually working really, really close is going to be a little bit dangerous. <laughs> That's okay. Said you could do it with marker for sure. Um, that's just for me, it's a preferred method. You know, we're a little over an hour in, minus detail. This could be easily a done piece. Um, but detail, it'll look like a million bucks. All right, so what I'm going to do is I've got black left in the airbrush here, and I've gone as crazy as I can, I think, at that stage. So I'm going to clean this out, and I'm going to start on some of the paintbrush work. That's going to kind of push us through towards uh, finishing stages. I'm not totally done with the airbrush because <laughs> uh, because there's a way that I'm going to do highlights that it's going to involve a little bit of back and forth but I need to be done with the airbrush for now because my goodness my hand hurts and stuff. So bear with me a moment while I clean out the airbrush talk some extra shells. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> For the, uh, for the three people that are hanging out here. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it, man. I'll get it. A lot of these, um, the longer live videos that we do on like Instagram or YouTube, I prefer them here on YouTube because the it's, it's just better. Um, this is a little bit simpler format to work in, but uh, oftentimes. The setup for the video is more about the people that are going to be watching it later versus, uh, you know, the, the five or six people that'll hang out here and watch paint dry with us. <laughs> yeah, we can hang out and talk about all kinds of stuff. All right, so I'm going to grab my eraser again, 
pull out some of the same highlights I was working on before. You know, because now I've airbrushed a whole different color into everything. And I want to pull everything out. Is he dying? I don't know. <laughs> no one's paying attention. Uh oh. So this format, or this type, I should say, of uh, erasing or highlighting is actually called subtractive highlighting. So, because we're actually taking an eraser and we are erasing some of the airbrush. Now, it's kind of important to know that you're going to do this if you're going to do it. Because um, it means you would airbrush a little bit differently, you would layer a little bit differently. Like, it does kind of change the technique a little bit. Because uh, if you just kind of go for it, uh, and you weren't planning on doing it, it may not work the same way. <laughs> Your results may vary. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that ground reflection in there. Don't really want to pull too much out of the wheels. Not that there's a lot in here. Um, but I'll tend to over airbrush just a tiny bit so that I can pull some of this out. Um, so, like all, all types of art, you know, there's a, a forwards and a backwards. A little bit here, a little bit there. A little bit more. But being subtractive just kind of gives you a little bit more control of some of that forwards, backwards. more aggressive erasers and really get more out of it, but I seem to have misplaced everything I own. <laughs> Which, oh well. Uh, but in reality, actually, a lot of the subtractive stuff that I'm doing is really just guides for how I'm going to paint the highlights later. And of course, you can see I'm using a, a brush to, to sweep away any of the mess as opposed to my hand because you could just build it up on the back of your hand and make an even bigger mess. We don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. Getting there. Cool. It's already got a really cool look to it. I dig it. Yeah. So it's really just uh, 10,000 little highlights, and this guy is more or less done. Um, it doesn't sound like it's a lot of work, but that's where the real work actually is. That's where the really, really hard parts. Um, I try to do a really clean job of the line work, specifically because if you do a good job with the line work, you can actually carry a lot of the process as well. Um, you can let the line work breathe, and it can be a part of the artwork. You don't necessarily want to bury the line work. You want to let it show through. But there's parts that I'm going to erase. There's parts that I'm going to... Um, there are parts that I'm going to bury. But it's more than just a guide for where you want to put everything. All right, so... <coughs> Thank you. I'm going to grab some water real quick, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to figure out what's next. Which is, no doubt, these 10,000 little baby towels. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with, I think, is, uh, I'm going to start with some transparent white. Essentially, all the edges and details are going to end up being white anyways, because we've done a good job of creating contrast. With the uh, with the black, and we don't really need to go any further with that. We can, we can kind of save that for later. 
So I'm using an acrylic gouache. It's an acrylic gouache. So it kind of works the same way as a gouache. It dries like an acrylic, but it looks like a gouache. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a really opaque acrylic that she mixed with a little bit of water. flows really, really good. There's about a million different things you can use for something like this. Um, but it's just my choice of material. Okay, so I'm going to grab a couple of Kafka brush here. These are some of the liners that I use. Just kind of note that, you know, the number says the size. Not only the length out, but also the size of line. Uh, so, start with something kind of normal here. Mm, yeah, alright, so I'm going to move some of the art materials down a little bit. So I've got some space to work with the page. Because it's actually going to make uh, the most difference for comfort in lines is being able to actually... Uh, Turn the page around. You notice I tacked it down while I was doing some airbrushing so that my hand while I was airbrushing wouldn't get hung up and and, uh, and create any issues. I'm trying to figure out how much this I'll actually be able to do on camera. Some of the stuff I need to, my face needs to be right in it so at least I can kind of get started and give you guys an idea. Yeah I can already see this going to be a problem. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So I'm kind of using some of the pinstripe techniques to, to get these lines down and around. So essentially what we're doing is taking the acrylic paints or the whatever you want to put in the paintbrush here and creating the hard edges that we might have lost in the process of the airbrush and the marker, you know, we softened a lot of stuff up. So we really want to create these hard edges all over again. This is where the definition is really going to be. Um, you know, kind of bring some focus to some areas. Um, and actually, the amount of struggle that I had just doing that one line, because of where the camera is, is too much. So I'm actually going to call it a day there. Because in order to do a really good job with this, I need to I need to not have this camera right next to my face. So uh, I'm going to finish this off camera. Uh, but meanwhile, thank you guys so much for joining for this stage of this whole thing. It was great being able to do a video again. And uh, yeah, um, the video will stay up. It'll post. You can refer to it. I'll finish this up off camera. And I'll post it later on Instagram and probably YouTube shorts as well. But thank you guys so much for joining us. You have a good night.